In this video, we are going to start writing our first use case, uh, which is related to the inventories. So this is the final application that we are going to create. This is the application that I created for one of my videos on my YouTube channel. I'm showing you this application just so that we can kind of gather some requirements. You can consider this application as a mockup. Let's say this mockup on the paper. But for the purpose of convenience, uh, I'm just showing you the final application. By looking at the final application, we can see what kind of use cases are involved in these screens. Let's go to our first screen and see how we can write a use case. So I'm hitting on the inventory menu and I'm seeing this inventory list, uh, which shows all of the inventories in the system. Now, when you have a lot of inventories, this may not be a good idea. You may need paging, right? But for now, we are showing all of the inventories, right? Uh, another thing we notice is that if we start typing, right, uh, we can see that we can filter based on things. Or if we, we leave the text box empty, click on the view button is going to again give us all of the view inventories. And of course, we can also click on uh, the view button to trigger the, the search behavior. So this is the first use case. So if we were to write a kind of a more official use case, then how do we write it? And that's what we're going to do in this video. So I'm just going to use Notepad to work on this. You can start with a user story sentence, right? So you can say as a user, I can view inventories as well as search inventories. I better say I can view all the inventories as well as search certain inventories by names so that I can manage them, right? So this is basically a very simple statement as a user story. But to provide more detailed information, we're going to continue writing uh, as a use case. So for use case, we need preconditions, post conditions, and we need detailed steps, All right? So this is a main scenario where now the precondition is the user is on the inventories page. And the post condition is the user sees the inventories that meet the search condition. Uh, the detail steps is the first step is the user enters view letters in the search box and the user clicks on the the view button right so after this then it will reach the post condition and then of course we can have our alternative alternative scenario a right and in here we are going to have also the three sections but uh, if the precondition is the same, then we, we can delete them. And here, the alternative scenario A is when the user doesn't enter anything. Basically keeps the search box empty and then click on the view button. So we have the same precondition, so we can delete this. And then the post condition is basically the user sees all the inventory. Right, inventories and detail steps is the user makes the search box empty the user clicks on the view button right and this has to be changed to 1a and 2a uh, so basically 1a replaces this number one here and 2a replaces this number two here right and after that, we go into the, the post condition here, and this has to be 
uh, 2a. So this 2a also replaces uh, number 2 here. Uh, the, the reason why we want to do this is because if we have a lot of steps, for example, in the detail steps in the main scenario here, in the main scenario here, uh, then if the alternative scenario does not require you to change all of the steps, in this case, it's probably not a very good example. We, we are changing all of the steps. Uh, actually, uh, the user clicks on the view button. See, the user clicks on the view button is not being changed so we don't even need to mention this right so it's basically when you write alternative scenario you don't have to repeat all of the steps right you can just mention the ones that needs to be replaced and then you just need to specify uh, the the number correctly right so this corresponds to a here so 1a basically replaces this so if we have a uh, alternative scenario B so the alternative scenario B is basically for the scenario where the user are not clicking on the view button but we want the searching functionality to be activated when the user hit the enter I know this is different from the uh, final application that I just showed you but this time I want to change it a little bit so in the alternative scenario B do we have the same Precondition: the user has to be on the inventory page. Do we have the same post condition to the main scenario? Um, yes, we have the same post condition. So the only thing that is changed are the detail steps. So the detail steps are changed, but the first steps are not being changed. The user enters a few letters in their search box, but the second one needs to be replaced, right? So we have to be uh, the user hits enter hits the the enter key the same post condition will apply right the user sees the inventory that meets the search condition all right so this is what we are going to implement the first use case uh, in the rest of the course i'm not going to write all of this because i want to save you some time but for this first use case i'm writing this as a template for you uh, i do suggest you if you want to follow use case driven development or even not use case driven development but still requires use case i'm just having this template as example right you can write your use case differently but this is how i write my use cases if you have a qa team or qa person uh, they can take a look at this uh, documentation and uh, test accordingly for us because we are developers and we are in this project at least in this course we're doing use case driven development, right? Clean architecture. So we do need a use case documentation like this. So in this video, I just wanted to show you how to properly write a use case so that both developers and QA team can use the documentation for development as well as testing.